Welcome to our lecture online. Probably the most recent new technique used to find the Hubble constant more accurately is called the TRGB. What does TRGB stand for? Well, RG stands for red giant, T stands for the top of the red gi giant, and B stands for branch. So we read that as top of the red giant branch. Well, what does that mean and what does that have to do with finding the Hubble constant? Well, we need to look for something that is very bright and that has a luminosity that is very predictable. And it turns out that when a star leaves the main sequence and becomes a red giant, it starts moving up what we call the red giant branch. And it reaches all the way to the very top. At the very top, what has happened there is that the core inside the star, the star that's now swelling up to be a red giant, well, the core is collapsing because the hydrogen to helium burning has completed. The whole core is now filled with helium. There's nothing to keep the core going, so the core collapses while the region around the core is now fusing hydrogen into helium, pushing the rest of the, re of the red giant out to enormous size. As the core is collapsing, the temperature of the core reaches a very high temperature and eventually reaches 100 million Kelvin. At that point, hydrogen can be converted into carbon. And at that moment, we have what we call the helium flash. Well, that happens at a very particular moment in the star's life as it's moving up the red giant branch. And when it's at the very top and the helium flash occurs, the magnitude of the brightness of the star is right around a minus 4.0, plus or minus about 0 0.1, 0 0.05, a very small variation in the brightness of a particular type of red giant. Now, of course, they look for a red giant that came within a certain range on the the uh, main sequence so that the brightness at the helium flash is right about the same amount each single time. And since at that point an absolute magnitude for a star of minus 4.0 makes it a really bright object easy to recognize. So we can even see red giants that are at, their, at, the, uh, at the moment of the helium flash. We can see those red giants in galaxies that are tens of light years away from us. I should say tens of millions of light years away from us in such a way that just like the Cepheid variables we can try to find the distance to those galaxies and therefore we can then compare the distance of the galaxies to the velocities of those galaxies and come up with a very accurate measurement of the Hubble constant. Notice that this is a technique that didn't start until about 2012, 2013. By 2014, the range was about 75 on the high end and about 65 or so on the low end with an estimated value of about 69. Very quickly, by the time 2017 came around, the range had changed from about 74 to about 69 with an average value of 71. And then finally, about 2020, we're now at a range of about 72 on the high end and maybe 69 on the low end with an estimated value of about 69.8. And notice the very important part is that this range is relatively small. In other words, we're fairly certain because of this very small uncertainty in the absolute magnitude of a red giant that is experiences a helium flash. Because of that, we can make some fairly accurate estimates of the value of the Hubble constant. What's interesting is that the 69.8 is well below the 73.9 that we get with the Cepheid variables, and the range puts it below what we expect to see for the Cepheid variables. That's kind of strange, although 73.9, 69.8, the distance between those isn't very large, and so that's encouraging that the two very different techniques do give us a fairly similar answer. And so that at least shows us that we're in the ballpark, that we can say that with those two techniques, it's somewhere between the high 69 area and up to maybe 74 or somewhere in between. So, Again, the second method does a very good job in mimicking what we're able to do with the Cepheid variables, even though we got a lower number, but a lower number with a smaller range. Now, since this technique is so young, so new, maybe we need a few more years to hammer out all the potential problems and pitfalls that could have come with this method, but at least it's helping us get to a closer value of the Hubble constant. At least that's number two, the TRGB. Oh, now you're asking me 70, that makes it an older universe of close to about 14, 14.2 14 billion years. It's 13.4. 4, 4, yeah. So it's for every one uh, at this value, so for every one, it's about a 0.2. So 
So from 74, that's 6, 8, 10, yeah, that was about 14.2 billion years old for this value. So 13, 14 billion years old, I don't think it's going to keep anybody awake. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I take that personal. <laughs> You're just a physicist. <laughs> that loves astronomy. <laughs>